ஹலோ வெல்கம் டு லா எக்ஸலன்ஸ் இன் அவர் ரீகேப் ப்ரோக்ராம் வி ஆர் டிஸ்கஸிங் மந்த்லி கரண்ட் அஃபேர்ஸ் வீடியோஸ் இன் திஸ் வீடியோ லெட் இஸ் டிஸ்கஸ் பார்ட் டூ ஆஃப் டிசம்பர் ட்வெண்ட்டி ட்வெண்ட்டிஸ் கரண்ட் அஃபேர்ஸ் பிடிஎஃப் ஆஃப் திஸ் பர்டிகுலர் வீடியோ இஸ் அவைலபிள் இன் த டிஸ்கிரிப்ஷன் இஃப் யூ வாண்ட் டு ரைட் டெஸ்ட் சீரீஸ் பேஸ்ட் ஆன் மந்த்லி வீடியோஸ் யூ கேன் ரைட் ஸோ பை கிளிக்கிங் ஆன் தி லிங்க் கிவன் இன் தி டிஸ்கிரிப்ஷன் லெட் இஸ் டிஸ்கஸ் எக்கானமி ரிலேட்டட் கரண்ட் அஃபேர்ஸ் ஃபஸ்ட் ஒன் இஸ் பீம் பீம் இஸ் ரிலேட்டட் டு அக்ரிகல்ச்சுரல் மார்க்கெட்ஸ் பிஎஸ்சி இ அக்ரிகல்ச்சுரல் மார்க்கெட்ஸ் லிமிடெட் போர்ட்டல் பீம் போர்ட்டல் இட் வாஸ் லான்ச்ட் பை பிஎஸ்சி பாம்பே ஸ்டாக் எக்ஸ்சேஞ்ச் இட் இஸ் அன் எலக்ட்ரானிக் ஸ்பாட் பிளாட்ஃபார்ம் வாட் டு வி மீன் பை ஸ்பாட் பிளாட்ஃபார்ம் திஸ் ஒன் ஹெல்ப்ஸ் ஃபர் ஸ்பாட் மார்க்கெட் ஆஃப் அக்ரிகல்ச்சுரல் கமோடிட்டீஸ் ஸ்பாட் மார்க்கெட்ஸ் ஆர் ஃபினான்ஷியல் மார்க்கெட்ஸ் வேர் கூட்ஸ் ஆர் எக்ஸ்சேஞ்சட் இம்மீடியட்லி ஆஃப்டர் தி அக்ரிமெண்ட் எதர் கூட்ஸ் ஆர் கரன்சிஸ் ஆர் செக்யூரிட்டிஸ் எனி திங் ஸ்பாட் மார்க்கெட் இஃப் இட் இஸ் கூட்ஸ் வி கால் இட் அ ஸ்பாட் கமோடிட்டி மார்க்கெட் ஸ்பாட் கமோடிட்டி ரெஃபர்ஸ் டு கமோடிட்டி தட் இஸ் பீயிங் சோல்ட் வித் தி இன்டென்ஷன் ஆஃப் பீயிங் டெலிவர்ட் டு அதர் பயர் ஃபேர்லி இம்மீடியட்லி ஆஃப்டர் தி அக்ரிமெண்ட் சச் மார்க்கெட்ஸ் ஆர் கால்ட் அ ஸ்பாட் மார்க்கெட்ஸ் பீம் இஸ் அ ஸ்பாட் மார்க்கெட் பிளாட்ஃபார்ம் வி ஹாவ் இநாம் ஈ நாம் இஸ் இ நேஷனல் அக்ரிகல்ச்சுரல் மார்க்கெட்ஸ் இ நேஷனல் அக்ரிகல்ச்சுரல் மார்க்கெட்ஸ் திஸ் இஸ் அ ஸ்கீம் ஆர் திஸ் இஸ் அன் இனிஷியேட்டிவ் டு ரெடியூஸ் தி கண்ட்ரோல்ஸ் அட் தி ஏபிஎம்சி லெவல் அக்ரிகல்ச்சர் ப்ரொடியூஸ் மார்க்கெட் கமிட்டீஸ் அர்லியர் ரூல்ஸ் வர் லைக் திஸ் ஃபார்மர் கேன் செல் ஓன்லி இன் தி நியர் பை ஏபிஎம்சி மார்க்கெட் கேன் நாட் செல் இன் எனி அதர் அக்ரிகல்ச்சுரல் மார்க்கெட் ஏரியா பட் நவ் அண்டர் இ நாம் Farmer can sell his produce anywhere, anywhere through online trading. The online trading uh, is provided through National e- E-NAM portal and buyer quotes the price. If seller wants to sell at that particular price, he sells, trade happens and settlement will be done when the goods delivered payments will be automatically sent to the seller's account. And this E-NAM is maintained by Small Farmers Agree Business Consortium. and this is the agency under ministry of agriculture spot market is different now this spot market beam market beam portal is maintained by bse bombay stock exchange both these initiatives they provide more remunerative to the farmer through the more through market reach next issue is bank credit growth recently that is in december 2020 bank credit growth started increasing in this context we need to understand why this is an in- important indicator for the economic revival bank credit is total funds that is given by the bank or the financial institution to either individuals or to the businesses and bank credit if it increases let's say if more people are taking the loans that means credit if it is increasing what does that show either the consumption expenditure is increasing if individuals are taking loans let's say housing loan consumption is increasing or let's say if a corporate company is taking the loan that means investment is increasing either consumption or investment will be increasing if the credit is more that means if the bank credit is more that shows that economic activity is increasing if you look at this particular graph economic uh, uh, economic growth has slowed down after 2019 in this context you can clearly observe that econo- bank credit is also slowing down after taking reform measures in the mid of 2020 slowly the bank credit has increased that means bank credit growth shows the trend of economic activity it is considered an important indicator for economic activity next issue is coordination lending coordination means combined banks they have more money nbfcs they have more reach to the people even to the remotest areas rural areas they have more reach but they have financial constraints especially in the past few years nbfcs they don't have much money to lend in this context what if if they if both of them come together and lend give the money that is lend the money banks have more money and financial resources nbfcs have more access so this kind of lending is known as coordination lending nbfcs 
they identify the person let's say person wants to take the loan so they identify the person banks give the loan to this particular person in return the uh, out of the interest paid to the banks some percentage will be paid to this so in this context there is one more provision banks need not give credit to all the individuals and all the references given by the nbfc it has the discretion whether to grant a loan or not bank has the discretion all bank loans sorry all the loans originated by nbfcs need not be catered to by the banks now in this context co origination is designed to overcome the liquidity crisis in the nbfc sector under co lending scheme nbfcs can partner with the banks to offer loans to the lesser served priority sector areas what do we mean by priority sector priority sector agriculture social sector education solar power likewise there are many areas which are recognized under priority sector or out of overall loans given by the commercial banks 40% should be given to priority sector and now when these two come can come together they can serve the unreached areas too that is why co origination lending as a concept was brought in by the rbi next issue is gafa tax gafa means google apple facebook and amazon gafa tax is proposed as a digital tax that is to be levied on the internet companies france has decided to introduce 3% of total revenues of the internet companies need to be paid as a tax that's the decision of france so in this context gafa tax can be said as digital tax gafa tax here we need to understand what is the need for this tax we already have corporate tax etc why there is separate need for this goods and services on both of them we have a tax why separate tax because existing tax norms are framed for brick and mortar businesses physical models but not for regulating the online services let's say company a can locate itself in america and it can provide services over here through internet it can gather the money not pay taxes here but pay taxes there that's again as the taxation rates of any country so in this context one as of now the existing taxation structure is not considering the regulation of online services second one technology companies differ from the traditional businesses that's why how to calculate the revenue how to calculate the profits that has complexity and then co- often more complex and corporate structures are set up by several companies so these companies uh, these countries in which these companies are operating they might not be getting the taxes out of them such condition is known as beps base erosion and profit shifting base erosion and profit shifting so this is a general issue gafa tax is discussed as european union related measure then what is the issue with india we have equalization levy on the online marketing or digital marketing services 6% tax was imposed that is known as equalization levy last year that is in 2020 government has brought in digital services tax dst this digital services tax is imposed on all digital services it is imposed at 2% of the total revenues generated by these companies including e-commerce companies social media companies all other companies on their revenues 2% is imposed as digital services tax it has subsumed this equalization levy some countries like like in like usa they criticize this tax saying that it is a discrimination against their companies against their mnc's that's the argument of usa but why we imposed we want to re- reduce this base erosion profit shifting is happening that's why we want to impose the tax on these companies gafa tax in india we call it as dst digital services tax next issue is dedicated freight corridor freight means movement of goods dedicated freight corridor this is a project under railways railway lines can be divided into passenger passenger rail trains and goods trains as of now in many of the routes we have same route for passenger trains as well as the goods train passenger trains will be given more preference 
on the track as compared to goods trains that is why there are more delays to reduce that to fasten up the transportation of goods this dedicated freight corridor corporation of india limited was started this is a special purpose vehicle it builds and operates dedicated freight corridors that means for the freight movement separate tracks are maintained separate corridors are maintained and there are two corridors that are already in works one is western dedicated corridor two is eastern dedicated freight corridor recently our prime minister has inaugurated new baupur and new kajura a section of eastern dedicated freight corridor in this context let us understand what is eastern dedicated freight corridor it is a 1856 long kilometer corridor it consists of two distinct segments one electrified double track segment two electrified single track segment it starts from luthiana in punjab till west bengal dankuni west bengal it is constructed by this dedicated freight corridor corporation of india limited world bank is funding for eastern dedicated freight corridor let us understand this a little further eastern dedicated freight corridor along with eastern dedicated freight corridor our prime minister has also inaugurated operation control center at prayagraj for edc eastern dedicated freight corridor this new stretch is uh, is built to provide opportunities for industries like aluminium textile pottery industry etc OCC that is operation control center is one of the largest structures of its type that is green buildings griha f on griha 4 rating it's a griha 4 rating structure and it is built as per sugamya bharat abhiyan norms sugamya bharat abhiyan means under accessible india structures needs to be made to accessible for everyone including the disabled these norms are called as sugamya bharat Uh, abhiyan norms under these norms occ is built now eastern dedicated freight corridor project it helps reducing the transportation cost it connects ports with industrial areas it facilitates heavy haul train and double stack containers it increases the railways the share in the freight to 45 percentage next issue is cepa between india and bangladesh comprehensive economic partnership agreement in this context we have to understand various types of free trade agreements between countries uh, there are two major types one is fta free trade agreement second one is cepa comprehensive economic partnership agreement free trade generally deals uh, is made between two countries to provide preferential trade terms especially for tra- trade concessions and india has negotiated fta with many countries including sri lanka various other blocks like asean etc the cepa is a comprehensive agreement it is for cooperation in extensive area from goods to services to investment and other areas of cooperation india already has signed cepas with south korea and japan and we are trying to have cepas with australia in uh, bangladesh etc with bangladesh we had a talks we have not finalized it yet next issue is telecom industry in india so, telecom industry is important for national security as are no that's why committee on uh, security cabinet committee on security has given approval for national security directive on telecom sector national security directive on telecom sector let us understand briefly about india's telecom sector and its comparative situation currently india is the world's second largest telecommunication market with 1.16 billion subscribers and 87 percentage of tel- tele density and india ranks world's second largest market in terms of total internet users with 743 million subscribers by 2020 after geo this numbers have increased enormously and it is expected that in the next 5 years mobile penetration mobile phone penetration will increase and data costs are going to reduce this will add more internet users to the market in this context government need to consider the request from the telecom industry they have requested for revival of the sector only few telecom sector companies are operating because of the because of heavy competition tariffs are at very very low cost 
very low tariffs have led to an erosion of their profits in this context many of the telecom companies are in distress the government has to provide the support to that particular industry next issue is draft indian ports bill 2020 and indian ports first let us understand about indian ports and the situation and then let us understand draft indian ports bill india is strategically located in the indian ocean region on the world's shipping routes and it has coastline approximately about 7517 kilometers and 14500 kilometers of potentially navigable inland waterways maritime transport handles 70% of india's trading trade in volume and india has 204 ports out of which 13 13 are major ports they handle 55% of cargo traffic jawaharlal nehru port trust jawaharlal nehru port trust is the largest major port in india port development in india is a concurrent subject that means both the center and state can make laws on it fdi up to 100% is allowed under automatic route for port and harbor construction and maintenance of the projects what are the major ports kanla port mumbai port jawaharlal nehru port panaji port marmagova mangalore kochi chutikorin ennor chennai visakhapatnam paradeep and haldia these are the major ports of india major ports are handled by union ministry minor ports and intermediary ports are handled by the state governments now what is draft indian ports bill this proposes for setting up maritime state development council this council shall access the future development of existing ports and the new ports both major and non major major comes under central list non major comes under state list so both comes state uh, uh, purview both come under now under this maritime state development council the responsibility for maintaining lighthouses is to be given to state maritime boards as of now that is uh, that lies with the central directorate directorate general of lighthouses and light ships in this context this particular draft indian ports bill it leaves the management and administration of major ports first type major ports with the major ports authorities with the board of major port authority constituted under major ports authority act and with the state maritime boards in case of non major ports in case of major ports with the board of major port authority in case of non major ports with the state maritime boards and this means every coastal state and union territory has to constitute state maritime board if it is not there already this empowers state maritime boards with uniform powers across the states and functions including planning development supervisory administrative adjudicatory powers and functions this enables ease of doing business ease of doing business and it promotes the port led development we have a project known as sagar mala project sagar mala project envisages for port development this particular draft indian ports bill helps for that let us briefly understand what this major ports authorities bill is it is passed now it is an act this major ports authorities bill it replaces 1963 act that regulates the 13 major ports in india this new law takes into account entry of private players and ppp model in the port sector in case of any dispute between private players uh, how it should be resolved this is mentioned in this May board for major ports authority will be constituted to resolve the dispute in case of any with regard to ports and now this particular bill envisages for increase in the ease of doing business this complements this major ports bill to th- um, sorry major ports act 2021 next let us understand science and technology related aspects first issue is artificial sun of china china has recently tested its fusion reactor which is known as hl2m tokomak reactor this is dubbed as artificial sun why this is a fusion reactor fusion nuclear fusion reaction happens naturally in the sun and other stars that's why the, as this is artificially created one nuclear reactor 
this is known as artificial sun this runs with fusion technology this fusion technology this tokomak tokomak is experimental reactor experimental fusion reactor so this tokomak reactor china's latest and advanced nuclear fusion experimental re- research reactor this has the potential to unlock the power of clean energy why this is called clean energy this nuclear form of energy is known as clean because it uses hydrogen as the fuel hydrogen is considered cleaner fuel that's why in this tokomak reactor it uses powerful magnetic field to fuse the hot plasma fusion we said fusion fusion happens between two hydrogen molecules it forms helium along with that it produces heat this heat is used to generate the electricity now initially to start this process to fuse these two molecules it takes over 150 million degree celsius temperatures such huge temperatures cannot in such huge temperatures a material cannot be hold in a in a solid or liquid or gaseous form that's why powerful magnets are used and it is held in the form of plasma fourth state of matter and recently china has tested this nuclear reactor for few seconds it was operational and it said it has reached a level where the input energy is less than the output energy that means for the first time output energy is more than what it has consumed problem with fusion fusion reactors is this it consumes more energy than it releases that's why it was not viable earlier now slowly experiments are happening in this particular artificial sun experiment china said it has crossed that barrier limit this limit of input output mismatch now these are the two methods of nuclear reaction one is fusion reaction where hydrogen molecules deuterium tritium these are fused to form helium it leads to energy and in fission reaction uranium heavy heavy molecule is divided into smaller molecules it also leads to pro- production of energy but why this is preferred as compared to this because hydrogen is cleaner hydrogen is cleaner form of fuel plus it is non nuclear that means non radiative non radiation radiation effect won't be there in case of this plus energy once the generation of energy starts it produces continuous source of energy and hydrogen is cheaper fuel is or no hydrogen is cheaper as compared to uranium and it is safer also safer cheaper non radiative that is why fusion energy is preferred over this but it has technological barriers there is this project known as iter international thermonuclear energy reactor this is the international experiment where india and other members are part in producing the fusion energy india china usa likewise there are many countries in this particular experiment next issue is world malaria report 2020 WHO has recently released World Malaria Report 2020 in this in this particular report India's achievement in reducing the malaria burden was highlighted India has made considerable progress in reducing the malaria burden India is the only high endemic country in terms of malaria reported a decline of 17.6% on year to year comparison annual parasitic incidence reduced by 27.6% as compared to uh, as compared to 2017 by 18.4% in 2019 from 2012 onwards we are consistently reducing the annual parasitic incidence So now we need to understand what is this malaria disease and how it impacts us. Malaria is caused by a parasite. This parasite spreads into our body through mosquito bite. Symptoms of malaria include fever, dry cough, shaking chills, sweating, muscle pain, abdominal pain, headache, nausea, diarrhea, etc. It can be tested through blood blood samples. Prevention of malaria can be done using mosquito nets. covering and clearing the stagnant water mosquitoes bite needs to be 
are dressed this is the this is how we can prevent it and there's a treatment there are medicines anti malarial medicines are available and we are also researching on vaccines for malarial disease malarial prevention in this context achievements of india in terms of reducing the annual parasitic incident is commendable here we have to remember one more point malaria impacts our red blood cells rbcs red blood cell count reduces substantially in case of malaria next issue is microwave energy weapons there is this term in use that is havana syndrome recently national academics of sciences usa it has found that microwave radiation might be the possible cause of havana syndrome havana syndrome means there are undefinable symptoms among the people who are posted in havana from usa so all the diplomatic personnel uh, who are working in the embassies and diplomatic missions in cuba they are suffering from undefinable symptoms which is known as havana syndrome this havana syndrome they they were unable to identify why and what has caused this but recently they said maybe microwave radiation or directed energy weapon might be the cause of this what is a directed energy weapon from a directed source let's say laser waves or sonic waves or microwaves in multiple types any any type of wave can be directed towards a person which cannot be seen by that individual this high energy wave it impacts the individual it can increase the temperatures it can Uh, destabilize the cells etc such weapons are known as directed energy weapons if the energy source is microwave we call such weapons as microwave energy weapons and these might be the possible cause of havana syndrome that is the that is a report of this national academy of sciences and this directed energy weapons they use is active denial system which detects the attackers by sending non lethal millimeter wave of electronic energy it causes burning sensation without directly affecting them and there are many countries which have this direct energy weapons including china usa etc next issue is fast tags union ministry of road transport and highways has said that in all the lines in the free plazas in the national highways they will be declared as fast tag lines a free plaza that means no congestion along the toll plazas then what is this fast tag then what is the technology involved in this fast tag is nothing but a, a particular code a particular code which works with radio frequency identification rfid along the toll plazas there are scanners which emit the radio waves they scan the code on the rfid rfid sticker and this code leads it to a particular app account based from that account money will be deducted fast tag account money will be deducted so that is how fast tags works radio frequency identification scanners they scan this particular code based on that code it redirects into an app from that the money gets directed the payment method is is part of national electronic toll collection program which is designed by national payments corporation of india it uses smart technology to collect the tolls it leaves the uh, toll plazas congestion free congestion is less pollution would be less yes or no congestion is less pollution is less and the tax collection is more efficient man power requirement would be very less that is the significance of fast tag fast tag implemented by national highways authority under ministry of road transport nhai is the nodal agency in implementation of fast tag next issue is narrow band iot recently bsnl has launched world's largest narrow bo- narrow band iot it provides connectivity for millions of unconnected machines sensors industrial iot devices etc that means see normally our phones mobiles mobiles laptops these are connected through internet right so it has a 
it has different frequency bsnl has launched a low frequency iot network narrow which is called as narrow band iot it is a low power wide area low power wide area technology it it connects any device anywhere at any point of time it can connect more devices to the internet of things and make many new applications a reality this particular one is uh, it it operates on a licensed spectrum so it is very secure reliable and provides guaranteed quality of services this narrow band iot provides secure and reliable network and it optimizes for low power consumption it integrates into cellular system and it provides deeper penetration into indoor areas and underground areas very significant now what is iot then we said this is the narrow band iot spectrum launched by bsnl that is a service provided by bsnl now, what is this concept of iot iot internet of things means it is a network of physical objects connected with each others with sensor software and other technologies these iot it is used in various applications including home appliances industrial applications automotive agricultural military medicinal environmental retail and many more iot is used in various industries it is simply connected network of things but in this context cyber security is important as or no the main million devices are connected millions of devices so in this context these connected devices need to maintain security also next issue is vaccine hesitancy vaccine hesitancy means delay in acceptance or refusal of vaccines despite availability of vaccine services that means vaccines are available but people delay or refuse to take the vaccines there are many reasons for it one religious propaganda two fake news through social media three vaccine de- derived diseases that might lead to people hesitating to take the vaccines and inconvenience in accessing the vaccines these are some of the reasons for vaccine hesitancy this needs to be addressed through proper awareness and persuasion vaccine hesitancy reduces the rate of vaccination next issue is waste to energy technology wte waste to energy this is also known as energy from waste technology in waste to energy technologies first waste is collected collected waste is transported to the waste management plants and from then to waste management process from then onwards it it is converted into either electricity or gas or to biofuels such as ethanol and biodiesel these waste technologies can be applied to several types of waste such as semi solid waste liquid waste gaseous waste etc but most common type of application as of now is using municipal solid waste municipal solid waste can be converted into through pyrolysis combustion can be converted into electricity through biogas can be produced fermentation and transesterification process can be used to to convert into biofuel such as ethanol and biodiesel this waste to energy technology can be said as waste to wealth technologies from waste we are converting it into wealth next current issue is cms01 communication satellite 01 India's communication satellite 01 was launched recently by ISRO. It is the 42nd communication satellite of India. It was launched using PSLV C50. It is the 52nd flight of PSLV and 22nd fi- flight of PSLV XL XL variant and it is the overall 77th mission from Sri Harikota port station. CMS01 is the communication satellite that provides extended sea band services. The coverage of this satellite includes Indian mainland, Andaman and Nicobar Islands and Lakshadweep Island. And this is the 42nd communication satellite. Earlier we used to call communication satellites with insat series names. Later changed to GSAT from 2001. Recently ISRO has changed the nomenclature we are calling it as CMS in the last month's current affairs we have discussed about EOS01 earth observation satellite so for remote sensing satellites nomenclature was changed and for CMS communication satellites also it's changed 
first satellite is named as CMS1, next one will be called as CMS02 like that. Communication satellites are used for telecommunication, telemedicine, teleeducation. There are many applications of telecommunication, sorry, communication satellites. Next issue is data from Chandrayaan 2. Recently, ISRO has released first set of data from India's second moon mission that is Chandrayaan 2. Here we have OHRC, Op Orbiter High Resolution Camera, OHRC. The orbiter is moving around the moon at 100 kilometers height. From that height, it has mapped the entire surface of the moon and it has prepared the 3D map. In this context, these images collected by OHRC are very significant in understanding its tropography. topography. Let us understand a bit about Chandrayaan 2. Chandrayaan 2 was launched using GSLV Mark 3 launch vehicle and in, in the month of September 2019. And it is for expanding the lunar exploration. We have sent a total 13 payloads, Pragyan rover and Vikram lander. These two were attached and, and while landing, Vikram lander failed. That's why Pragna, Pragyan rover didn't work. Only orbiter is orbiting around the earth, sorry, orbiting around the moon now at the height of 100 kilometers. The objective of Chandrayaan 2 is to build on the evidence gathered by the Chandrayaan 1. Chandrayaan 1 has gathered the evidence that moon has traces of water in the form of solid form, in solid form. And now Chandrayaan 2 wants to study the extent and distribution of water on the moon. And it is going to study topography, seismography and composition of lunar surface and atmosphere. And it is for mapping the lunar surface and preparing the 3D map of the moon. These are the objectives of Chandrayaan, 1, Chandrayaan 2. Next issue is Genome Sequencing, CCMB, Center for Cellular and Molecular Biology, has been sequencing SARS-CoV-2 viral genomes since the onset of COVID-19 pandemic. Now, what is the meaning of genome sequencing? Every species has a different set of genes and mapping the genes and mapping the nucleotides, DNA nucleotides of the species is known as genome sequencing. We have a method known as gen next generation sequencing. This next generation sequencing you involves scanning the entire viral genome. This helps in identifying more places of viral mutation. Mutation means change in the DNA sequence or change in the sequence of genes. This mutation, when mutation happens, it leads to new variants. So, CCMB study and other agencies under Indian National SARS-CoV-19 Genomic Consortium, this concept in labs, they all are studying, they all are understanding the genes or variations of virus by studying the genome sequences. In this context, changes in the lineage of virus can be studied through genome sequencing. That is why it is very, very important to study genome sequencing of viruses. And genome sequencing has other applications such as gene therapy, gene modification. It can be used for genetics, genetic engineering, etc. Next issue is Gavi membership. Gavi. Gavi means Global Alliance for Vaccines and Immunizations. Gavi. Recently, our health minister was nominated for Gavi, Gavi boat uh, uh, from Southeast Asia region and Western Pacific Regional Office. From that region, for one member is elected into the Gavi boat and our health minister was nominated for that. What is Gavi then? Gavi is international organization. Gavi Alliance. This brings together public and private sectors and they have a shared goal in equitable access to vaccines. Gavi Board is responsible for strategic direction and policy making of the global vaccination. Next issue is viral vector vaccine. COVID-19 for COVID-19, AstraZeneca and Oxford University has developed viral vector vaccine. What is the meaning of viral vector? A particular gene, in this case spike protein sequencing gene, is added into another virus which is not harmful. And then this virus is introduced in the form of vaccine into our body that produces antibody response in our body. 
in our uh, in our human body that is that is how viral vector vaccines work viral vector vaccines are of two types one is replicating viral vector vaccines to non non replicating viral vector vaccines in astrazeneca's uh, vaccine they used non replicating adenovirus vector vaccines they they go into our body and they replicate in case of replicating viral vector vaccines in case of non viral vector vaccines they won't replicate but our body produces immune response it produces the antibodies these antibodies uh, produced antibodies they lead to formation of immune memory in our body this immune memory responds whenever the infection comes into our body next issue is solar wind hack solar wind hack is the cyber attack that has happened on united states in in us us government agencies are targeted but not directly through the third party us government websites were uh, were hacked how this happened it is also known as supply chain attack see federal government uh, deploy certain softwares as are known so they these softwares the vendors which are known as software companies these vendors these are targeted when these are targeted their services to government get stalled that is how it targeted the us government and this malware once installed this malware malware gives a backdoor entry to the hackers to the systems and networks of the solar winds customers and this malware also reduces the impact of antiviruses that means even the antivirus softwares they cannot detect this particular um, 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 detect this malware that's how the solar winds this is one of the important cyber attack cyber threats that we have experienced last year this year pegasus is the biggest news last year solar winds is biggest one next issue is greater conjunction conjunction means coming together when jupiter and saturn when they come together on a, on a, when they come nearby and they when when they come on a straight line from the earth from a reference point on earth we call that event as the greater conjunction conjunction means least distance between two planets in a straight line that can come that can occur between any two planets we are calling it as great conjunction because these two are bigger planets it is a rare celestial event between jupiter and saturn where they come very close to each other which is known as conjunction this happens once in every 20 to 29 years this has happened in 1963 they have come very much closer in 1963 next time this will happen in 2080 generally conjunction event happens once in 20 years this event greater conjunction great conjunction this happens uh, at, at this scale next issue is arakaibo telescope in purito raiko purito raiko is a country located in caribbean sea this purito raiko island we have a telescope known as arakaibo telescope this telescope is maintained by usa usa's national science foundation this is the uh, location which is near to the equator that is why this place is chosen by the us uh, national science foundation this purito raiko here this particular arakaibo telescope is built 57 years back it was constructed in 1963 in 1962 it has discovered the exoplanet in 2020 it has collapsed collapsed the the achievements of this telescope is it is considered the most powerful radar telescope it has it was helpful in making discoveries like finding prebiotic molecules in distant galaxies and it has found the first exoplanets what do we mean by exoplanets exoplanet means planets that are located outside our solar system and it has located the first millisecond pulsars we have discussed what is the meaning of pulsar in november 2020 pulsars are similar to neutron stars yes this arakaibo it has gathered the first evidence of existence of gravitational waves and this was used to study einstein's uh, sorry einstein's theory of general real relativity next issue is rna viruses so this is a news because of mutations now what we need to understand is viruses can 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 have dna or rna most of the viruses has 
RNA as their genetic materials, but some of the viruses as DNA as the genetic materials. Now the issue is RNA viruses they generally have high mutation rates as compared to GNA viruses because viral RNA polymerases they lack proofreading ability of DNA polymerases. That is why DNA polymerases when they make a new copy they proofread but RNA polymerases they don't that is why more mutations happen. RNA viruses that is why they show diversity and the strength. Even our corona virus has RNA as the genetic material. RNA viruses are of various types based on various shapes elliptical, polyhedrical, spherical, complex. Our corona is spherical shaped virus with RNA as its genetic material. Next issue is Indian remote sensing satellites. Recently Department of Space has published Space Based Remote Sensing Policy of India 2020. In this context let us understand what is remote sensing. Remote sensing is the science application of obtaining information from a distance either from aircrafts or satellites. This policy is specifically for satellites and these sole uh, sorry uh, remote sensing satellites are generally placed in the polar sun synchronous orbit and they use various sensors remote sensors these sensors they detect the energy that is reflected from the earth right these remote sensing satellites they can be used in wide range of applications including coastal applications ocean applications hazard assessment natural resource management urban governance etc there are many many applications of remote sensing satellites these are important please go through this table once and we are naming our remote sensing satellites with EOS series, Earth Observation Satellite Series. And we are naming communication satellites with CMS series. These are the issues of part 2 of December 2020. All the very best. Thank you very much.